for the first time in my life, um, I uh, took no joy in writing the song or releasing the song. Um, and I think it's important, before I play you the song, <clears throat> that I give you a little context about the song and where it came from. <clears throat> so the song is about Afghanistan. <clears throat> and it's about um, our withdrawal from Afghanistan. It is not about the decision to withdraw, because I think there are good arguments of goodwill on both sides, but it is about what we've seen and what I've experienced in the last month. Um, of course, when we saw the initial images of Afghanistan, we were all kind of horrified. Uh, kind of reminded me of 9-11 a little bit uh, when we saw the terrible uh, image of a guy falling from a plane and the moms handing the babies. But I had no intention of writing the song at that point. Um, but then when our soldiers were killed, I went into my studio and I was just angry and I was banging on the piano. And uh, just trying to get out my emotions like we all find a way to do with me and beat up my piano. Um, and then I got a call after we left Afghanistan. <clears throat> and it was from a friend of mine, an amazing person who does incredible work, humanitarian work around the world. And I was going to Mammoth actually with my my wife and my son. And I couldn't really hear her go, so I pulled over. And I said, what's going on? She said, well, I need, I need a number, I need a connection. And I'm like, sure, um, what's going on? She said, well, I'm organizing evacs of AMSITs from Afghanistan. And me being me, I'm like, well, what's an AMSIT? Um, she said, an American citizen. And there was quiet, just like that, on the line um, for a minute. And I, I said, wait, you're telling me that you're gonna risk your life and those with you to go to Afghanistan and rescue our citizens that we left behind. And there was, again, there was silence on the line and she started choking up a little bit. And it, it, it really kind of just struck me that I, this is not a world that we live in, this can't be happening. So I, I, I wrote a few more lines that night. And then the song kind of finished itself when the president um, gave his extraordinary success speech. Um, and like many of you, I was confused, maybe a little insulted, but I had hope because I spent my life um, playing and hanging out with our troops and I have a great respect for the military and our soldiers. Presidents do things and you know they say things, but I've always felt if it gets if 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 it's really crucial and a loss on the line, our, our generals are are the adults in the room. So I expected Millie and Austin to come out and say, look, what maybe extraordinary success is a little off. And here's what we're doing, here's what we're planning to do, here's the mistakes we made, and um, but we're gonna fix it and do everything we can. And they came out and echoed the same line. And that scared me. And I kept waiting for somebody to say something in the arts <laughs> um, because it made me fear for the next crisis. And uh, so the song finished itself. Now, to me, this, the song came from a moral place. It's not a political song. It's a moral message about promises that we made to people there, that we promised to protect, that we left there, we broke our promise. Um, it's about accountability and admitting when you make mistakes because that's how you can rectify them and learn not to do them again. It's not a political song, but of course in this age, everything's political. Um, so, um, I've said this many times, but it's true. If, if a Republican was president or Donald Trump was president and we were in this situation, the song would remain the same. Only the names would change. And those of you who know me and follow me for the last 10 years know I have no problems criticizing the prior administrations and those before that. But of course, in this world, everything's taken political, and this song, um, to a certain extent, has reflected that. Um, I just hope that if you hear this song, um, you're welcome to tape it, you're welcome to film it, you're welcome to share it, you're welcome to take pleasure in deleting it. People have been um, basically printing out my picture singing the song and lining their kitty litter boxes with it. That's cool. <laughs> That's America, bro. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But you know what I'm not for? I'm not for the fact that I have to ask my lovely quartet to leave the stage. 
So if somebody sees them in the background with me singing this song, they get canceled and lose their jobs. That I'm not cool with. So I've learned a lot about this song so far, and it's just growing and just starting. But I hope you just listen. And um, I hope, even more important than the song and the message, that we get to a place where everything is not perceived and exploited in a tribal way. That we take off our political glasses and put on moral ones. Because this is a great shame that we have done. And I talk to my friend every day that I talk to at Mammoth, on the ground. Things are happening as we speak. Yesterday, she lost two people in a safe house that the Taliban found and killed. So it's not something that's, you know, here, there, gone. So, and I'd also like to thank some people here tonight who without them, probably the song would never found a platform. They know who they are and uh, I am grateful to them. And I think it's important that we allow artists of all worldviews to be able to speak their mind without fear of retribution and they are courageous to support that. What's happening? 